Hello and welcome back and that's right before we start today's video on the HS760 and the real benefits that it's going to bring I think it's really important for a number of you to understand the benefits of dual actuator technology so I've spoken to the lab boys and they're going to give you this very quick scientific demonstration of the benefits of a dual actuator hard drive. We paid five grand for that. That's, that's it. That's the budget for the year. Just gone. Oh, well, butter sandwiches it is then. That is right. WD have kind of quietly revealed the brand new Ultrastar HS760 drive. Western Digital's dual actuator hard drive. It's not the first time we've talked about it on the channel, more about that later, but for now let's talk a little bit about this drive. The hardware, maybe a little bit of what's on board because it's got some of that great stuff that we've seen in the previous Ultrastar releases, uh, some of the reviews that we did last year, you'll know about that already, but straight away when I say that they released this quietly, what I mean by that is, one, it has appeared on their website, but we've not seen any official press releases. Two, there are no data sheets readily available right now, which is really weird for them. And thirdly, there's only one capacity, the 20TB drive. Now, on the face of it, yum yum, 20TB drive, that's what I want to hear, because let's face it, if you are venturing into this world of much, much faster performing drives, you want large capacity as well. That is kind of what the dual actuator philosophy of um, hard drive manufacturing and, and much like the benefits of HAMR and EAMR and MAMR for the future have been. It's all about bridging this gap, right? So when it comes to a lot of the hard drive development in the last four to five years, you've got most of these big brands that have been combating this one thing, which is data centers. They're the ones that need all of the data. They digest, the amount of data being created every day is insane. The recycle rate, the workload rate, it's insane. So they are trying to get the biggest possible drives. The problem is, it's never really been a problem to make bigger and bigger drives. The problem has always been bigger and bigger and dri drives, but also giving performance, also giving stability, and also at the same time, managing power and ultimately letting the drive do its job and keeping it within an acceptable scale. So that is where we've seen lots of hard drive development, but at the same time, the cost effectiveness of SSDs has started to come down and also the durability of SSDs has increased. And it's kind of thrown a little bit of shade on hard drives. And there's always been talk over the last few years that are hard drives dead? Have SSDs finally taken over and such and such? And I'm sure you're watching this on a device, a phone or a tablet or a laptop or a computer or something that is running the OS off an SSD. SSDs are now in our lives. However, SSDs still aren't at the point of capacity that hard drives are, both in terms of sheer scale of capacity and the cost effectiveness of the capacity of a hard drive. And that means that although you can get very affordable M2 NVMEs, you can get, you know, SATA, all that kind of stuff that gives you great performance, and the capacities are reaching all the dizzy heights of 4 or 8 TB in some cases, at that point, because of hardware shortages, NAND shortages and more, the kind of affordability of SSD, particularly the data center level, and the amount of rewrite, rewrite, and workload rates, they're just not going to cut it. The DWPD or terabytes written to any drive, it's just not going to cut it in terms of SSD for replacing hard drives right now. Which brings us back to hard drives, because although the capacities are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, the performance thresholds of hard drives were kind of living at 260, 270, maybe peaking at 280 megabytes per second. And then... In 2019, the two big brands in hard drive, Seagate and WD, both of them that year unveiled dual actuator hard drives. Dual actuator hard drives are when inside a drive here, you've got two arms. Now, those two arms are what are doing the read and writing, but there's so much more to it than that. Because 
a dual actuator hard drive is actually two hard drives technically inside a single casing it's stripped down and it's ultimately in the case of this 10 tb drive it's actually two the uh, platter's worth of two um 10 tb drives for this 20 tb drive a few sources online have highlighted that it's separated over nine platters something i can't really get my head around in terms of splitting it apart but you know i don't know any difference so let's go with that for now with a big old tbc around it and inside you have got for the two 10 tb drives inside that chassis with the platter separated between them both of them have their own arm actuator there that little arm on a little mechanical um uh, riggy that's reading the driver all times and writing to the driver as well then they are delivered into a single sas port connection there they are divided into that sas port and then the host managed device that they are connected into that's on an os level an app level whatever connected by that sas will either see it as two 10 tb drives logical lums that are visible from within the single drive casing or using sas to SATA connectors based on some drives that have released uh, uh, not from wd but others they can be pulled into a single large drive now what are the benefits of that well first and foremost performance you end up with drives effectively much like raid technology that we talked about here on the channel effectively doubling uh, the read write performance there depending on the arrangement you go for so they've used again much like them silently revealing this there's no real mention of specific reported transfer rates. All they state is it's twice that of the HC560. That's the 20TB uh, that we reviewed last year, which would put that performance threshold at around 550 to 580 megabytes per second sequential performance there. Now, on top of that, they do highlight that it maintains the 550 workload uh, TB annual workload rate. It maintains the 2.5 million MTBF, who cares? Um, and it's got that five year warranty. So it maintains uh, the durability of the um, single drive, uh, single actuator 560 there at 20 TB. So, again, that's quite good news because the big question about dual actuator technology has always been the host management of the two data flow lines going into the system, much like individual drives in a RAID array. Now, on top of that, there is the question of power consumption. Uh, they state that there is um, a much higher power efficiency of 37%, I had to look at my notes there, compared with that of the 20TB560. So I don't know how that works out, but the idea of having the two actuator arms they are stating provides more than a third power efficiency compared with a 20TB drive with a single actuator in sight. Now, uh, RPM is reported at 7200. Uh, it is a SAS connection there. There's no mention of SATA at this time. Um, also uh, inside it is standard CMR recording technology there. And again, it's a helium seal enclosure there, much like their other drives. And again, helium it will allow for platters to be a lot thin due to the uh, the depreciating drag and friction factor that helium allows it to create within that larger casing so again it allows it to make those platters lovely and thin all the way along now a lot of you are going to be asking much like myself when i first heard about this way back uh, ocp 2019 ocp they were the bad guys in robocop right how do these compare with Seagate's Mac 2 drives that were revealed that same year in 2019? And Mac 2 drives and Seagate, they're up to four different capacities. They've been around for a while. I'm not going to say they've made the biggest splash, but they've certainly been available. Well, I can only really say, because we haven't got the data sheets, based on Ultrastar technology there. And of course, what you've got with Ultrastar there, again, you've got those thinner platters, but you've got those two things. You've got Optinand and you've got Armour Cache. What are they? And again, if you're not watching my other videos, uh, Optinand is what has allowed, um, ultimately, Ultrastar and WD's other ranges, like the Red Pro series, um, to get that larger capacity inside. It's done by a small area of flash on board on the drive and unlike hybrid drives that flash that's on board is used to store system uh, sorry drive data from the drive itself for operational index data and stuff like that the metadata operations of the drive and that allows that data saving across the disks to allow a larger amount of capacity within the drive there that's how optinan works we will hopefully be doing a much more detailed video on that later in 2023 on top of that there's benefits of 
armor cache. Now, armor cache is something, again, I'm going to be talking a lot more on the channel later on, but to do an incredibly caveman example of this, um, when you are using a hard drive, those of you that like to play around with the settings may have noticed, whether during benchmarks or otherwise, that you sometimes get the option to disable or enable write cache. Now, what that is, is as you're sending, drive, uh, you're sending data to the drive, there's that area of cache that's on board, and it's traditionally larger, depending on the higher capacity of the drive, and then the data is sent to the cache, and the cache sends it to the drive. The cache allows uh, a higher performance there as a drive, rather than being written to a uh, slow optical disk, it's handed to a small area of much faster cache, which is then committing it to the individual platters there inside. Now, what is the difference between normal caching and armor cache? Well, when you, the, one of the reasons people disable write cache traditionally is if that data is being sent to the cache first and then sent to the drive and you have a power failure, this is non-recoverable. It immediately empties itself. And the result is if you don't, if you use write cache and you have an unexpected power failure, you can have a corrupted write. You can have an issue with that write. And ultimately, any kind of safeguards that the drive has to recover in the event of power failure, or at least to close operations, will not allow that data to carry over. And we're talking milliseconds here. Now, that's why a lot of people disable write cache. But utilizing um, their own uh, armor cache, what that does is armor cache takes advantage of that small area of uh, NAND that we talked about there, thanks to OptiNAND. And what happens is, in the event of an unexpected power failure, the drive, utilizing the small amount of kinetic energy that is stored, and this is traditional to most drives, that it uses traditionally to power itself down, also facilitates with an additional capacitor the emptying of that cache onto the vo uh, onto the NAND space that's being used by OptiNAND. This is an incredible oversimplification, and I will do a much better description of that. But that's something you get included in those latest generation larger Ultrastar drives there. And it's something that's going to be in these new uh, dual actuator drives in the HS760 series. Now, again, this has been an incredibly silent release from the brand. I would have expected them to be a lot noisier about it. I definitely would have expected uh, more capacity down the single one but still nonetheless it's nice that it exists because of this whole shortfall between large capacity drives at the data center level and lots of people moving towards fabric lots of people moving towards SSD server flash arrays which the price point of these are just insane and the durability of SSDs it's just not the same you know, that NAND wearing away so hopefully the um, HS760 series will serve as a fantastic alternative for Ultrastar. And of course, I'm really looking forward to seeing how it measures up against the established Mac 2 drives because WD have always had this reputation of not, in many cases, ever being first to the party. What they do is they spend a lot more time on development. We've seen it before in the past with a lot of their releases. And when they do release something, traditionally, when you look at it like for like for performance, you often find the WD version is a little bit faster or it has that higher amount of durability on it. Sometimes not a vast amount and sometimes you can be proven right and wrong. But I'm genuinely excited to see how their series of dual, actu dual actuator drives are going to measure up against the existing range of this technology. And of course, as we go further and further into this year, we will do a special video on Seagate and WD very, very soon. These two brands have got insane plans, not just for this year, but all the way up to 2030 with the sheer capacity and development in, uh, in the magnetic recording technology and how they're going to commit data and their commitment towards hard drives for the next few years. So stay tuned for that. But this has been an overview of the WD Ultrastar DC HS760. And I didn't knock that drive over once with my elbow and I'm well chuffed about that. So if you came to the end of the video and wonder why I did that, yeah, you'll have to find out for yourself. But Thank you so much for watching. There's a link to a, um, an article on this in the description. We're going to way more detail where we'll update it with specifications as we know more. If you do want to learn more, subscribe because we'll be talking more about these two brands within the next week or so with a big overview of their plans for the year. And if you need help choosing the right solution for your home or business needs, use the free advice section over on NAS Compares. Go down to NAS Compares, big blue button on the right-hand side, or the free community forum at Ask NAS Compares. Other than that, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.